Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We receive it. We thank you for revelation of it. We thank you for all that you bring forth and uh, that we will receive the truth and believe the truth and we will walk in your ways so we'll be right before you. Thank you for all that you accomplished this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated if you would. We are sharing a series on the subject of hell. First message, we talked about the reality of hell, how, where it's at in the center of the earth and what it's like, a place of indescribable torment, a terrible place. We talked in the second message about how did Jesus delivered us so that we might not go to hell. And he did this because he went to hell for us and paid the price, redeemed us, took back the keys of hell and death, liberated those ones that were the Old Testament saints in the upper compartment of hell who were held there until Jesus had come to bring forth the redemption and brought them out. And we talked about the bottom line being that if we are going to make sure that we don't go to hell, we must be righteous and holy before the Lord. Then the third message, we begin to talk about why a person might go to hell and how they might come to hell by discussing conditions that must be met to be righteous and also so that we would not go to hell looking at ver ver or the verses which have subjunctive mood verbs showing the conditions which are to be met so that then we will be walking in the way of righteousness. We will not be walking contrary to his way and end up in hell. Today we're going to continue on this and today we're going to be giving you very specific, precise scriptures that there's no question about it, that if we do not walk in his ways, these are the people that would go to hell. We're going to talk about who and why one might end up going to hell. We'll look at these scriptures that are very important for us to understand that show us what we must do. And if we're, remember, God knows us by what we're walking after on an ongoing basis. And if you're walking with the Lord, you are okay with him. We begin in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 24. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell. Above would refer to that which is of heaven, because we're born from above. And so the way of life is the way that comes from heaven, the way of the Spirit, the way according to the Word of God. And if we're going to be wise, we're going to walk in his ways, putting the Word of God first place in our life. Notice, if we walk in this way of life, what will be the result? That he may depart from hell. <laughs> that means if you don't walk in the way of life, you will end up in hell because you'll be walking in a way that's contrary to his way. We also see another scripture well in Proverbs that is startling to some people, but it is the truth. Proverbs 23, 13. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with a rod, and shall deliver his soul from hell. What does that mean? That means if the child is corrected and doesn't receive the correction, they're going to end up in hell. Children can go to hell. Some people think they can't. This scripture destroys that. If it's going to deliver their soul from hell, they could. Now, this is ta not talking about like an infant or someone that can't be corrected. This is talking about someone. It doesn't, the, the word child here, which is the word na'ar in the Hebrew, it can mean anybody from an infant on up. But in the context, you can tell that it's talking about someone who could be corrected. They must know what they're doing, and they had to be in rebellion and making wrong choices. So, therefore, this is a child who knows what they're doing and being in rebellion. So, you correct them, and they need to receive. Remember, children are to obey their parents in the Lord, for this is right, that it might be well with them and they live long on the earth, as the scripture says. And here, if they'll receive the correction, then their soul will be delivered from hell. We go over to Luke and chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, we see in verse 2. Jesus answering said to them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you, no, nay. But except you repent, you shall all likewise 
perish, he says. Now, when he talks about this perishing, this is mean you're going to perish for yourself because it's a middle voice. It's going to affect you. You're actually causing yourself to perish because you are going to be yielding to what you shouldn't be doing. You shall perish because you aren't walking in the ways of the Lord. Now, when it talks about repent, repent means to change one's mind, which is going to be evidenced by a change in their action and change in fruit. And this is to be showing an ongoing effect, except they repent, present tense, with an ongoing effect. They would perish. And by the way, this is a subjunctive mood, which means it's a conditional statement. So except they might repent with an ongoing change in their life, choosing the way of the Lord, they will perish. I mean, God expects us to deal with sin and to make the change and to walk in the ways of the Lord, showing forth rep true repentance because we have the works, we have the fruit, we have the walk, and we are walking in the ways of the Lord. When it talks about perishing, this is a metaphor here to devote or give over to eternal misery in hell, someone who is perishing in a terrible state because of not repenting and walking in the ways of the Lord. We see another scripture that talks about who would go to hell and why they would go to hell. In Jude, verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. They, they were destroyed. They weren't saved. They were destroyed. Why? Because they quit believing. If a person would quit believing and turn away from the way of the Lord, which is what these people did, they end up getting destroyed. We see over in Matthew 13, verse 47. Here he talks about the kingdom of heaven like a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. This is talking about all the people. Which when it was full, they drew it ashore and sat down, gathered the good into vessels and cast away, cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world, or end of the age, this means. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from the righteous. Just means the righteous. That means there's going to be a separation. What's going to happen to the wicked? They're going to be cast into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing, lamentation, and gnashing of teeth. Gnashing refers to, of course, what it's going to be like. Extreme anguish and utter despair because of the eternal punishment. That's why we've got to make sure we are the righteous. There will be a dividing. John chapter 15, verse 2. Here it speaks of in verse 1, I'm the true vine, the father's the husbandman. Every branch in me, that means they're hooked into the, the, the vine who's Jesus, that means they're born again. That's the only way you get into the vine. You, to be a branch, you've got to be born again. Every branch in me, notice what it says, that beareth not fruit, he takes away. Well, they're not going to be with him any longer. The one it talks about bearing, this is a present tense participle indicating ongoing action continually. So every branch in me is to be continually bearing fruit. If he's not, he's going to be taken away. God expects us to bear fruit. We see another scripture that's similar to this in Luke chapter 3, verse 9. Now also the axe is laid in the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that bringeth forth not, bringeth not, bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down. And what happens to it? It gets cast into the fire. You and I are like the trees, the trees of righteousness. We've got to be bringing forth fruit. If not, there's something wrong. And these guys get cast into the fire. Back to John chapter 15, we see another point that is brought out of what, who would not go to hell, and who would? John 15, verse 6. If a man abide not in me, if he doesn't remain and continue in him, he's cast forth as a branch, he's withered. 
Men gather them, cast them into the fire, and they are burned as well. These people aren't saved either. We see a case over in Hebrews that is important for us to understand. Hebrews chapter 6, we pick up in verse 4. This is talking about someone who has grown up in the things of God, as you will see, and how if they turn away from the Lord and abandon Him, they cannot come back if you've come to some level of maturity. Verse 4, it is impossible. Well, that means it can't be so. It's impossible for those who were once enlightened. That means the light came to them and they got revelation of the Word. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. What's the heavenly gift? Getting born again when you get and receive Jesus. Were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. That meant they received the Holy Spirit as well. So the Holy Spirit was in these people. And have tasted the good Word of God. This speaks of one who's partaken of it, who has experienced this good rhema, spoken word of God in their life. They have seen the word working. And the powers, the dunamis of the age to come, they have seen the power of God in operation. So this is talking about someone. They've gotten the light. They've gotten revelation of the word. They got born again. They received the Holy Spirit. They got experienced in hearing the word of God that was working. They tasted the good word of God and saw the things that it was all about. And they saw the power of God in operation. So they've grown to some level of maturity. If they shall fall away, not a good translation here. Because there is no if. It's a word and. See, I put the cursor over the word if. It's the word ka'i, which means and. It's not translated if. And when we come to the word here about how they translate it, if they shall fall away, again, not a good translation because it's a participle. A participle would be described, uh, translated as having fallen away. It's past tense, being an aorist verb, tense. So, and having fallen away. So this is talking about something, not if they fall away. These guys had fall away. And having fallen away. When we talk about this word, falling away. When you look it up in Freiburg's lexicon, it refers to abandoning a former relationship where someone has deviated from the truth as we see. They've fallen away. They've turned away from the, the or wandered away from the truth. In Laonidas, it says it's figuratively of believers who've abandoned Christ. They've abandoned him. Strong says to apostatize and basically to renounce one's faith or turn away. If they have fallen away from the Lord, abandoned relationship, committed apostasy, and they have been born again, had the Holy Spirit, and had spiritual enlightenment, notice what it says. Remember, it said it was impossible to renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put them to an open shame or a public shame or expose them to public disgrace. You don't see God come and do a work in your life and then turn around and throw it out the window and go off in another direction and think you're going to come back when God, the people have seen the work that's been done. You don't do that to God. You're, going to be, you're not going to be able to come back. It is impossible. These guys are finished. Hebrews 6, verse 8. That which beareth thorns and briars, well, that's not good fruit, that's bad fruit, is rejected. This is the word adokum emos. We've seen it many times before. It's the word for where it's sometimes not approved. It's also the word about reprobate mind. So it's translated that way. He's rejected. He's not approved. And he is nigh unto cursing, whose end, what's his end result of this one going to be? He's going to be burned. He's going to be burned up, or he will be for the burning, the burning up, as it says. It's going to happen to him. God does wants to make sure that we are bringing forth good fruit. If we're not bringing forth the right fruit, that obviously means we're not walking in the way of the Lord. And certainly, thorns and briars show a person who is not walking in line with God's ways. We see over in Matthew 23, hypocrites will not make it with the Lord. They will end up going to hell. Matthew 23, verse 1, Then spake Jesus the multitude to his disciples, 
The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, do what they're sharing with you from the word of God, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. What's a hypocrite? One who says one thing, but doesn't do it themselves. And it goes on and talks about how they put, if we go through this, they put heavy burdens upon them, but they aren't doing things themselves. They don't carry any of those burdens themselves. The works are to be seen of men. All they care about is what men think about them. They want the uppermost rooms at the feast and the chief feasts in the synagogues. They want the exalted greetings in the marketplace. Otherwise, they're all about themselves, aren't they? Verse 13, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering it to go in. These people are obviously not doers of the word, and they're not going into the things of God. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer, just to, look to make you look like you're some super spiritual person, you know. Therefore, you should receive the greater judgment. The greater judgment comes upon these ones. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he's made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves, because they don't walk in the ways of the Lord whatsoever. Down to verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You make clean the outside of the cup on the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. They put on a nice show on the outside, but on the inside they're rotten. They're terrible. He says, blind Pharisee, cleanse that first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, <coughs> hypocrites, <coughs> for you're likened to whited sepulchres that indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. If you don't get cleansed, you're not going to be right with the Lord. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Now, anybody can put on an appearance, but within are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness, this means, anomia. They're not walking in the ways of the Lord whatsoever. These guys are going to end up. In fact, the bottom line on these guys was in verse 33. He said, you serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? They weren't going to because they weren't walking in the ways of the Lord. Another group of people that will not make it to heaven, they'll end up in hell. It says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust, this is the unrighteous, adikos, unto the day of judgment to be punished. And they are going to be punished. They're going to see the punishment that comes as they are sent down to hell. The unrighteous are the ones that do not end up in heaven. They are told to depart. They're not going to be with the Lord. We see this further shown in Luke chapter 13, beginning in verse 23. When one said to the Lord, he said, Lord, are there few that be saved? He said unto them, strive. This means you're going to contend with adversaries. You're going to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to engage in warfare against adversaries. And what's, how do you have to do, walk? You have to walk at the straight, narrow gate, this means. The narrow gate. And when you look up this particular word, the narrow gate, this refers to a gate that is of strict requirements relating to the entrance. It is the narrow, strict, exacting way. It's not just any way. It's the one way, the only way, the straight way. He says, for many, and this is the many as opposed to the few, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Why are they not able? The word able is not just the word dunamis. It is the word iskoo, which means to be strong, mighty, and forceful. So that means they didn't have strength and mighty force to be able to overcome, because you've got to overcome the enemy and walk in that narrow way, because he tries to get you to walk in all other ways. Once the master of the house is risen up, shut the door, and you begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. 
He'll answer and say unto you, I know you not whence means from where you are. And this is critical. We've seen this before. You are is present tense, meaning where you are continually. God knows you at a point in time where you are continually. I know you not from where you are continually, he's saying. That meant they're not walking right. Then they begin to say, well, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, past tense. You hast taught in our streets, past tense. We heard your word. Well, were they doing what was right at this point? No. He shall say, I tell you, I know you not from where you are. Depart from me. What were they? All you workers of Adakia, unrighteousness. These guys were workers of unrighteousness. If we're walking in unrighteousness, he is going to say, depart. God knows you from where you are continuously at any point in time in your life. We see another scripture over in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight, this is the stenos, the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. That means just any way you go leads to destruction. And this is the destruction, as it says, that consists of eternal misery in hell. And many there be which go there in their at. They're going this way. They're, making a, they're in trouble. Because straight, narrow is the gate. And then when it says narrow, it's not a good translation. It's the word thlibo, which means pressed. Where we get our word thlipsis, we're talking about pressure. Pressed is the way. Because you will be pressed by the enemy. The flesh will press you because it tries to get its own way to get you to walk in its, after it. You got, that's why you've got to crucify it. The world will try to get you to pu pull you in its directions. Straight, narrow is the gate, pressed is the way that leads unto life. And few there be that find it. Only the ones that are walking the straight and narrow way of the word are the ones that are going to enter in. And it is a narrow, strict, exacting way. It is the way of the word. We see another scripture that shows people that are not going to be going to heaven or with the Lord. It's over in Matthew chapter 7. Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. God knows people by their fruits. We're going to know people by their fruits. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, that would be someone who calls him Lord, which would mean he would, could be a born, he's a born again person, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the word doeth is present tense. This shows you another thing that's important. Only the ones that are consistent doers of the will of the Father which is in heaven are going to be able to enter in. The ones that are not are not going to be able to enter in. He goes on and he says in verse 22, Many, we got the many again, will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. So they're born again. And they had a relationship with him, and they were walking in his ways at one time. They were saved, as we can see. Have we not prophesied in thy name? You can't prophesy in his name unless you have the Holy Spirit, and you are born again. In thy name have cast out devils. You can't do anything in the name of Jesus unless you're born again, and you've got to know your authority, and you have to operate in authority in casting out the demons. These are Christians. And in thy name done many wonderful works. You can do nothing in his name if you're not born again. These are all Christians. Many ministers, Bible schools, people all over the place say, these guys weren't born again. It sure were born again. They were Christians. There's no question about it. Why do they say it? They're trying to explain away the next verse. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. They're thinking in their mind, rationalizing, instead of understanding what he means when he says, I never knew you. It's not talking about the fact that these people were not Christians in the past. When he says, says, I never knew you, we'll cover this in a moment, he says, depart from me. And why are they told to depart from him? You that are working, this is a present tense, Ongoing action, trans, Young's translates it, iniquity, which is lawlessness. 
And sin is lawlessness. From 1 John chapter 3 talks about that. These guys are not walking in continual sin. They're walking in lawlessness continually, contrary to the laws of the New Testament. And they are heard the same thing. Depart from me. Now, why is it when it says that I never knew you? What does that mean? It's understanding how God views a person at a point in time. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21. If the wicked will turn from all his sins that he's committed, keep all my statutes, do that which is lawful and right, he's walking on the right way. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Verse 22, all his transgressions, all these sinful things that he did in the past that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned. Not a good word to tr translate it this way because it really means to be remembered, recalled, or called to mind. This is why Young's translates it remembered. Otherwise, all the things that he did in the past, they won't be remembered as if they never were. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Well, that's good news. That's what happens to us. We turn away from sins. We've confessed our sins. We turn and we walk in the way of righteousness. Our sins are washed away. God doesn't remember our sins and iniquities anymore because we've met the conditions of confessing and repenting and now walking in the way of the Lord. Then we come to verse 24. When the righteous turneth away from his righteousness. Well, this guy was walking in righteousness. And now he's not going to be walking in righteousness anymore. He turned away from it and commits iniquity. Went and doeth according to all the abominations the wicked man doeth. He's walking like the wicked now. Shall he live? No. All his righteousness that he has done in the past, before he turned, shall not be, again, remembered or recalled to mind. It's as if it never happened. God is a just God. If he will wash our sins away and never not remember them, I don't know anything about those past sins. They're all gone. In like manner, if you turn from righteousness and you're walking in iniquity, he doesn't remember any of your righteousness anymore, that you were right with him. That's why he says, I never knew you. Of course, he says in his trespass, he's trespassed in a sin that he sinned in them, shall he die. Understanding why Jesus said what he said, in Matthew chapter 7, people have tried to reason this out in their mind, unfortunately. No. And when I said, I never knew you, it's talking about the fact that you, you're, all your righteousness is all gone because now you are walking in lawlessness. I know you, essentially, he said, by what you are working and walking after continuously now. That is how God knows us. And that is important to understand. Another thing that we see in 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7. To you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, or those are the ones that aren't born again, and that, these are the other ones, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not talking about they just obeyed at one time, because this is a present tense. They're not obeying the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They're not following the word of God. Remember, God knows us by what we're doing continually. So if this is someone, that's they're not following the word anymore whatsoever. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. These people are going to be punished as well. We see another scripture that's important for us. They're all important to know. But Mark chapter 9 tells us something. Verse 43. If thy hand offend thee, otherwise it's, caught, you're, it's, it's sinning, cut it off. It's better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Now, does he want us literally to cut off our hand? No, he wants us to repent and turn away and stop it. But if you can't, don't stop it, it'd be better to cut off your hand than end up in hell. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? If you're continuing and you're putting your hand to sinful things, you're going to end up in hell where the fire never shall be quenched. Also, the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. 
If your foot offend thee, you're walking in the wrong way. Same thing. Cut it off. Better for thee to enter halt into life, having two feet to be cast into hell in the fire that never shall be quenched, and where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. If thine eye offend thee, you've got to watch your eyes so you don't get lusting or watching, looking at things you shouldn't. That's why you can hardly watch anything out there that is in the media, on the TV, or movies should be absolutely out. There is so much filth coming through the movies and the TV. You are being contaminated in your, through your eye gate. Of course, your ears as well. Thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It's better for thee to enter in the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. In essence, these are your members, aren't they? If you're yielding your members to sinful things, you're going to be cast into hell fire. That means we need to make sure we are not watching evil stuff. Say, well, I thought I, that I'm a Christian, you know. Well, look what it says in Romans 6, 16. Know you not to whom, that's a person, you yield yourself servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin, which would be yielding to the devil. What's that produce? Death, not life. Or of obedience, which is yielding to God, obeying his word, unto righteousness. And what is of necessity to be able to be with an eternal life? Righteousness. Absolutely. Here is another scripture, and these are all very clear scriptures, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the punishment will come on these. Some people try to think that, oh, I thought that I was saved and never could even have a chance that this could happen to me. Not according to the word of God. This is all false teaching that is taught that. It's a lie. The once saved, always saved teaching is a lie one of the biggest doctrines of devils that has come out into the body of Christ. 1 John 3, 14. If you're not convinced yet, this one will convince you for sure. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Because we're commanded to walk after love. We're following his commandment. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. He can't be saved. He doesn't have eternal life whatsoever. And then the next verse says, Whosoever hateth, this is one who's hating continually. He's never letting go of his hatred against a person, present tense. His brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We don't deal with our sins. We are in trouble. We cannot remember. If you won't forgive someone, God won't forgive you of your sins. We talked about that the, uh, on Wednesday night. We also see over in Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. You've heard that it's been said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. What's kill mean? It means murder. Murder. Whosoever shall murder shall be in, it says, in danger of the judgment. Well, this is kind of a light way to say this because it's the word enikos, which means bound under obligation, subject to, liable to. <laughs> you're liable to the judgment that's going to come to pass. Otherwise, you're going to be under the judgment. If you have not confessed your sins now, is committing murder the unpardonable sin? No. If a person did that, they can confess their sins, receive forgiveness, cleansing from all unrighteous, repent, turn from it, and they can have a relationship with the Lord, and they'll be okay. They won't end up in hell. But if not, they're in trouble. But it's not just for this. I say unto whoever is angry with his brother without a cause, an unjust anger shall be in danger of the judgment as well. Whosoever say to his brother, Raka. Raka is a verbal abuse a term, a term of, of reproach and abuse. If you are speaking abusive things at a person and you don't confess your sin and repent and turn from it, you'll be in danger of the counsel, he says. And whosoever shall say, thou fool, this again is an insulting, reproachful term towards someone, shall be in danger of hell fire. That's if you don't confess your sin and repent and turn from it. That means we can't be walking in sin and think that we're going to be okay. It's not going to happen. We also see over in Matthew chapter 25. 
In Matthew chapter 25, we pick up in verse 31. And the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him. Then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. Before Him shall be gathered all the nations. He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. He shall set the sheep. Now, who are the sheep? They're the ones that are following the Lord closely, obeying Him, right on His heels, hearing His voice, doing what He says. They're on the right hand, and the goats on the left. The king will say to them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. These are the ones that were the sheep that were following him. And he goes on and says, I was a, I was a hunger, you gave me meat. Thirsty, you gave me drink. Hung, stranger, you took me in. Naked, you clothed me. They were doing the works of God, doing the word of God. Sick and you visited me, in prison you came to me. The righteous answer said, Lord, when saw we thee that you were hungry and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw the naked or, or took thee in and naked and clothed thee? When saw we sick and prisoner came unto thee? And the king will answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto him, inasmuch as you've done it to one of the, the least of these my brethren, you've done it unto me. Otherwise, if you've done these works, you've done it unto him. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. These are the goats. Notice, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, or their everlasting fire, where they're going to end up, ultimately in the lake of fire. And it's the same thing. They were same thing he goes through, and they say, When did we see you in this state? And he says in verse 45, Insomuch as you did it not <coughs> to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. These shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Only the righteous are going to make it into life eternal. God wants every one of us to walk in the ways of the Lord. We also see back in verse 30, he speaks about the unprofitable servant. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is because of the extreme anguish, utter despair, from eternal punishment in hell. He's the unprofitable servant. Remember the one who, it goes back and it talks about the one who has been the profitable servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Same thing in the next guy that had the two talents. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. God wants us to be faithful over a few things. He'll make us ruler over many things. But the next guy, the one who had the hard one talent, he didn't do what the Lord wanted him to do. He went and hid the talent instead of doing what God wanted him to do with what he'd given to him. And he would call him a wicked and slothful servant. He was lazy. He didn't, want, he didn't do the things that God told him to do. And he comes down here and he said, you know, take the talent away from him. And this is where he said, this guy who didn't use the things that God gave him, he was an unprofitable servant, he gets cast into outer darkness. We see another case. In Matthew chapter 8, and this is very interesting. This is the one who had the servant, centurion, who had the servant that was sick of the palsy and wanted Jesus to come and speak the word. The centurion said in Matthew 8, 8, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. So here, this guy, first of all, he's saying, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy myself. He understood that he only could be worthy if he was right with the Lord. That shows the fact that he had a real humility and a submission unto him. I'm a man under authority. Who was he submitted to? He was submitted to those who were in authority over him, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and he goeth, and he do another, come and he cometh to my servant, do this and he doeth it. And he carried out what he was supposed to do. When Jesus heard, he marveled and said to them, follow, verily I say unto you, not, not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, the men, that many shall come from the east and west, sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons, this is not children, it's huios, the sons of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. Huh. Well, that's sons of the kingdom. These people were in the kingdom. They were sons, but they aren't going to be still there where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why was that? 
Well, this guy was humble before the Lord, knowing that he wasn't worthy to have Jesus enter his house. And he was submitted to authority under him and was obedient to what he was told to do. That means those who are humble, those who are submitted unto him and obedient, will be the ones that will be shown to be going with him. The ones that aren't will be cast into outer darkness. This guy was, he was obedient to the things that the Lord told him to do. We see another case over in Matthew chapter 22. Verse 11, this is the wedding that the, where the king was looking for guests to come to the wedding and they tried to find him and they bid him, the first group, which is speaking of the Jews, and they didn't respond and they rejected it. Then when they finally did, they finally got all these ones, brought in both the bad and good, brought in everybody they could. All right? So now they come in. Everybody, God takes you just as you are, remember? And then he starts working in your life. You get born again when you come to him, and then he starts working. When, verse 11, when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on, this is the word and duo, had not clothed himself. The reason why it's translated that way is because it's a middle voice. He hadn't done it for himself. Middle voice means the subject is doing it for himself. And he should have already had it done with existing results at the time of speaking because it's a perfect tense verb, which means past action completed with existing results at the time of speaking. Meaning this guy would have clothed himself in the past and had his, these clothes on of the wedding garment at that time. He'd done the work that needed to be done for himself. He said, friend, how come in there hither not having a wedding garment? He was speechless. Said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away. Cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, that means just because you're invited, it doesn't mean that you're going to be accepted. You have to have put on the wedding garment, which means the work has to have been completed in the past with present results at the time of speaking. And where do we see this? about this wedding garment, the one who obviously had done what was necessary or prepared themselves ahead of time. It's in Revelation 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. That's when we come and we are joined together with Jesus, catching up to be caught in the Lord, in the air with the Lord at the rapture and gone up to the heaven for the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage of the Lamb has come. His wife, that would be the church, has made herself ready. Well, that means that's the same one. The guy said, hey, you didn't do, put this garment on for yourself. You didn't clothe yourself. She had made herself ready. She did what was needed to be done. To her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Why was this? For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, or more literally, the righteous acts of the saints, which means that their doing of righteousness produced righteousness, and that is the fine linen. Meaning, why were these guys clean and white and, and had this fine linen? Because they did the word of righteousness. They obviously went through the cleansing process. They were clean and white, as it says, clean, pure, holy, this means, and white. That meant they had gotten rid of all the uncleanness and all the filth out of their life. So putting on the wedding garment is for you to get cleansed and to do righteousness so that you are declared righteous as the fine linen. We see another scripture over in Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3 we see in verse 15. This is the church at Laodicea. The Laodicean church was one that was not doing right. Verse 15, I know thy works. Every, every one of those churches, he spoke about their works. Thou art neither cold nor hot, that thou would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, otherwise, this is a metaphor of the condition of the soul being wretched. Not right with God at all. <clears throat> neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you. Spew means to vomit you out of my mouth. Well, you're going to be out of here. You're not going to be with him whatsoever. These guys are done too. 
Why are they in this situation? Well, look what their attitude was. Because thou sayest, I'm rich, increased with goods, have need of nothing. Well, they were just doing everything in their own self. They didn't, they didn't need God whatsoever. He says, knowest not that thou art wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind and naked. You may think that all you need is just your goods and have your money and you're rich and all that and they don't need anything else. That doesn't make us right with God whatsoever. He said, they're wretched. wretched. <clears throat> We've covered this in the past, but we'll cover it for a moment here again. What does wretched mean? It's used two times, if you see down here in the bottom of the usage. The other usage shows clearly what it's talking about. Romans chapter 7, verse 24. O oh, wretched man that I am, same word, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? This is talking about the guy in Romans 7 who the things he wanted to do he wasn't doing, the things that he wanted to do he, he wasn't doing, the things that he was doing he didn't want to do. Why was that? Because of the flesh was driving him. Sin was dwelling in the flesh. So this is talking about a wretched man was a man who was living after the flesh and he was walking in continual sin. <clears throat> the next one was the guy who was miserable and that's only used two times as well. And what was God said they're miserable for? 1 Corinthians 15, 19 uses this where it says we're most miserable. And this is what it says. If in this life, this life, talking about what we're, this present life only, otherwise we don't, there isn't any future life, there's just this life only. We have hope in Christ only if we have hope in Christ. We're of all men most miserable. In other words, what are we to be doing? We're to be seeing the life to come. We should be living unto the Lord for all the things that are going to affect us in the life to come. Well, these guys were living only for the hope that they had now in the physical, natural life. They weren't living unto God whatsoever. Therefore, that's someone who, again, is simply living, to the, having, living for their own life now and not living for the Lord. They're obviously not living unto the Lord. <laughs> They're living unto themselves for all they care about. We come back here to verse 17, and he said they were poor. Someone's poor. Poor it means they're spiritually poor. They didn't have the things of God whatsoever in their life. And they're spiritually blind. They can't see spiritually. They, don't, they aren't perceiving things properly. They don't have revelation. And they're also naked, meaning they're not clothed spiritually. They haven't clothed themselves, just like the one in the, that was supposed to clothe themselves with a wedding garment. They weren't clothed. Because of this fact, they were going to be spewed out of his mouth. Anybody that is not getting themselves living unto the Lord and carrying on, working out their own salvation, becoming rich in the things of God, uh, getting spiritual revelation so they see spiritually, clothing themselves with all the things of God, if they're just living for this life only, and if they're living after the flesh, the wretched part, they're not right with God at all. They're going to be spewed out. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That's the word of God. That thou mayest be rich with the things of God. White raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. You're going to put on the white raiment, which is what the, the same thing. It talks about having that which is white. That's going to be pure and holy. That thou mayest be clothed. That the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. So we can't be spiritually naked. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see, being able to spiritually see as you have the word of God in you. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He calls them to repentance. And, of course, these guys had really shut God out of their life because he says, I, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Well, if he's knocking, that means he's on the outside. He's not on the inside. He's not able to work in their life because they pretty much shut him out. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. This is pretty much a person who has shut God out of his life. He's just living his own life. He's like a Christian, you know, he got born again and then he lives totally in the flesh and does not follow the word of God. He will be spewed out of his mouth. Another one that we see that's similar to this is what you would refer to as the Christian in name only, which is kind of like what that guy was. Revelation 3, verse 1. I know thy works, and that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and are dead. 
you call yourself such and such, but you're dead. There's no evidence whatsoever that you really are what you say that you are. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. Otherwise, a whole bunch has died out and almost every, everything else is going to be dying out. What was their problem? For I have not found thy works not perfect. It says perfect in the King James. It's a mistake. Made full, filled up, or fulfilled, as Young brings it out, is what the word means in the Greek. Your works weren't fulfilled before God. Well, that tells you something. If you don't fulfill the works that God has given unto you, you're going to be died at, at that. You'll be a Christian in name only. Because what are we all supposed to do? Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Doing, always obeying, doing what he says. Hearers and doers of the word of God. And he comes to him. he says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I'll come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I'll come upon thee. A judgment will come on these people suddenly. They won't even know it. It'll just hit them. Thou hast a few names in Sardis that have not defiled their garments. See, these guys, if they weren't walking in the way of the Lord, they were walking in sinful ways, and they were defiling their garments. Almost everybody had defiled their garments. There's only a few in this town that hadn't. The few are the right ones that are walking right. They shall walk with me in white, for they're worthy. They were walking in righteousness. All the rest of them were walking in the ways of sin. They were not following the Lord. They were not doing the works of God in their life. Verse 5, He that conquers and, and carries off the victory, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. That tells you another thing. How do you get this white raiment? You have to conquer and overcome. And who are the ones that had the white raiment? Those are the ones that were the righteous ones. Those are the ones that were, were clean and white and had, were arrayed in, in white there. The, they prepared themselves and were up there in the marriage with a lamb. White raiment. These guys didn't have white raiment. They're going to be spewed out of his mouth. So how do you get to the place of being clothed in white raiment? Because you have conquered and carried off the victory. Are you able to conquer and carry off the victory? Yes, in every situation. Because you are in Christ, you have the Word of God, God will perform the Word, He has given you authority and dominion over the enemy, He's given you everything that you have need of, you can walk in total victory and overcome. See, it's why it says, present tense, He expects us to overcome sin, the flesh, the world, attacks from the devil, any kind of temptation, you can overcome them all. How? Through the Word of God. He that conquers and is overcoming continually will be clothed with one white raiment. Meaning if you're not conquering and overcoming, you're in trouble. That means you must not be doing the word of God. Notice also, the guys that were defiled, and the guys that were Christians in name only, they're in this camp. He goes on and says, To this guy that overcomes, he'll not blot out his name out of the book of life, but confess his name before the Father and before his angels. Well, what's that imply? Well, the guys who didn't overcome and weren't clothed with white raiment, who were defiled, who were Christians in name only as such, they're going to be blotted out their name, out of the book of life, and they're going to be finished. They're not going to be right either. We also see in Romans chapter 1, God is a righteous God. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. All the ungodly are going to be judged. Talks about that in the end of Jude. All the ungodly for all their ungodly sayings and speeches and deeds and everything they've done are going to be judged. And all the unrighteousness of men, we already saw that. This is the word adikia. Workers of unrighteousness are told to part. Who hold back or hold down not hold the truth in unrighteousness. You can't hold the truth in unrighteousness because the truth isn't in unrighteousness. They're holding back or holding down, like Young's brings out, the truth, the Word of God, in unrighteousness. They're holding it back because they're walking in, un in unrighteousness. If you're walking in unrighteousness, you are going to be judged. And the wrath of God will come. Again, the bottom line is we have to walk in righteousness. Romans 2.5 But after the hardness, this is stubborn, stubbornness, obstinate, and impenitent heart, unrepented heart. 
That tells you. You can't have a stubborn, obstinate heart, and you can't have an unrepented heart. Otherwise, you continue to have wickedness and evil in your heart. What happens to those guys? They're treasuring up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. They're in trouble. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. We come down to verse 8. Unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. When we're talking about not obeying the truth, present tense, they're not obeying continually the truth. They're disobedient. But what are they doing? If you're not obeying the word, you're obeying something. So if you're obeying the word, which is the truth, that's righteousness. If you're obeying something else, what's that? Unrighteousness. But obey unrighteousness, as they say. And this guy, he's obeying continually, affecting himself for himself, middle voice, Present tense, ongoing action, middle voice. He's obeying him for, his own, for himself, his own benefit, essentially. Unrighteousness, that's what he's seeking and walking after. What's he going to get? He's going to get indignation. He's going to get wrath. He is going to get tribulation. And he's going to get anguish, calamity, and affliction upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. These guys are in trouble. Here's another case, Romans chapter 11, verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Who's this talking about? The Jews. Now standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. If God spared not the natural branches, the Jews, take heed lest he also spare not thee. <laughs> the same thing could happen to us. Behold the goodness and severity of God. He is a good God, but he's also a severe God. On them which, uh, which the fell, the one that fell, that turned away, severity. But toward thee, goodness, the ones that are following the Lord. But then he brings forth, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Meaning if you don't continue in the things of God, in the goodness of God, what's going to happen? That person would be cut off as well. Another thing we see. How about the person that's born again that walks in the works of the flesh? He's finished. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not, the unrighteous, that's all the ones that aren't doing the word, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And then it starts listing them all out. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers themselves of mankind, these are homosexuals, thieves, covetous, drunkards, or intoxicated ones, revilers, railers, extortioners, which is robbers, they aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God. We see in Galatians, it's got another list, and this one refers to specifically the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, not being cleansed. Lasciviousness, unbridled lust. No, you can't have that. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. This is strife or contention. That's what this means. Emulations, which means a envious, contentious, jealousy, rivalry kind of attitude. Wrath, being angry. This is one who desires to put someone themselves forward. That's what this means. Desire to put someone's self forward. Me first attitude. <laughs> that really is what all anything that has competition where you win and somebody else loses, that falls in this category. I'm putting me forward. Seditions, division, dissension, heresies, anything that heretical teachings. Oh, this is, these guys are all in trouble. Envyings, murders, drunkenness or intoxication, revelings. I want to party, you know. 
and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They're finished as well. And then we come to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 5. For this you know, no whoremonger, that's a fornicator, nor unclean person, this is quite a statement, one who's not cleansed. If you're not cleansed, it means you must not have repented, you must be walking in sin, lawlessness, unrighteousness, and continuing in it and haven't dealt with it. Nor covetous man, this is a guy that's greedy, who's an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ, that's the millennial reign, and of God, that's in the eternal time, because the kingdom gives, is given back by Jesus to the Father at the end of the millennial reign. So this is talking about for eternity. These guys are finished as well. These are all clear scriptures of people who will end up in hell or in the lake of fire. Matthew chapter 13, verse 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels and shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, this is ones who are stumbling, causing sin, and them which do, and again, remember, he knows you by what you're doing continuously, present tense, who are doing onomia, which is lawlessness. Doing law, I don't, they, they put this wrong here, it's not doing unlawlessness, it's doing lawlessness, but it means lawlessness. Them who are doing lawlessness. Well, we know that what happens to them, Jesus already said, the guy who was working lawlessness, depart from me. These guys are finished. They cast them into a furnace of fire. They'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who makes it? Who's going to be with the Lord? Who's going to be in the kingdom of the father? It's the righteous ones. We look over at Matthew 25. And this is another important one to see. They're all important to see because any of them could apply to anybody. Matthew 25, verse 1 to 4. The kingdom of heaven uh, is likened unto ten virgins that took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five were wise, five were foolish. Foolish took their lamps, took no oil with them. Ah, they weren't prepared, were they? The wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They were prepared. By bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Midnight the cries made, the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. Ah, that's Jesus coming. All the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us of your oil, for our laps are not gone out. It is a present tense, are going out, as Young brings Otherwise, these guys, they're in trouble. Remember the guys who, their works, they were dead, they're a Christian in name only and were dead, and, and their, the things that were remaining were about to die out? Same kind of thing. They were dying out because they obviously weren't walking in the ways of the Lord whatsoever. The wise said, no, not so, there, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Everybody has to get it for themselves. Buy means to, to essentially uh, be able to obtain something for yourself. And we have to go obtain the things of God for ourselves. Someone else can't do it for you. So they went to buy. The bridegroom came. They, they were ready with them to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord. So these were Christians. They called him Lord. Open to us. He answered and said, I verily say unto you, I know you not. This is another one where I, am not, I don't know you. Why did he not know them? The reason was because of where they were walking. Oil is for lamps to have light. Who are the lamps? You and me. What is the, brings the light in us? The Word of God. So the lamps need to have the Word that produces the light continually in us so that we have the light continually. Each has to buy for themselves 
the word or the to get the light within you, the, for the, so your lamp will be lit. The lamps of the foolish were going out because they didn't have the word in them. Some people think it's talking about the Holy Spirit. It's not talking about the Holy Spirit. The word produces light. If you walk in the light, remember, it's he's in the light, which is walking in line with the word. So each one has to, these guys didn't have the word in them. They were not prepared ready. Everything was dying out. Everything was going out. They weren't right. If you are not, he says, I don't know you. Remember, God knows a person by what they're doing on an ongoing basis at a point in time. These guys obviously had quit following the way of the Lord. They didn't have the word. They didn't have, weren't have the word in them. Their, the light was, whatever they had, was almost, was almost going out, eliminated. So you've got to be ready and preparing yourself, having light continually because of obtaining the word for yourself. Then you'll be prepared and ready. The ones who do not obtain the word or those who haven't prepared made themselves ready. Their lamps are going out. They're the foolish ones. They don't, aren't walking in the ways of the word of God. And if they're not do, getting the word, what are they doing? They must be walking in the ways that are not in line with the word. If you're, not, you're either in the word or you're not in the word. And so you either have the light or you don't have the light. And if they were walking in the ways contrary to that, which they obviously were, that's why he says, I don't know you because they weren't walking right, and they get shut out. 1 John chapter 2, verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall also continue in the Son and the Father. Meaning, if that which you have heard, which is the Word of God, doesn't continue to abide and remain in you, are you going to be continuing in the Son and the Father? No, you won't be. We see it even more clearly brought forth, the same thing in 2 John, verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth, uh, they're not walking in the way of the Word, and abides not, they're not abiding, remaining, continuing in the doctrine of Christ, the teaching of Christ. They're walking in some other way is not having God, literally. They're not having God. Meaning, because that's a present tense verb. Meaning, how are you having God? You're having God when you're walking in the doctrine of Christ. If you're walking in sin and you're not abiding in His teaching, not doing it, you're not having God. It doesn't matter whether you're born again or not. He that abides, remains, continues, ongoing in the teaching of the doctrine of Christ, he is having present tense both the Father and the Son. He has a relationship with him. So if you don't have a relationship with the Father and the Son, you're sunk. <laughs> you're not going to be with him. Only those that have a relationship with him are going to be going to heaven and be right with him or the righteous ones. These ones are not having God. And those people are in trouble. We see another case. Philippians chapter 3, verse 18. He said, For many walk. Here we got the many again. Remember, those are the ones that walk the broad way, or the many that, you know, were say, you, we've, we've heard your teaching and you we're in your presence, but they were now walking in unrighteousness. Many walk, of whom I've told you often and now tell you even weeping, because he knows where they're going to end up. They're the enemies of the cross of Christ. Oh, that's no good. Whose end is destruction. Destruction, utter destruction, eternal misery in hell is going to be their end result. What is their problem? Why they're going to be there? Whose God is their stomach, their belly. This is talking about your belly, your stomach. Who would this be? A glutton. Why is a glutton? N is destruction, because their stomach, their belly, is an idol. It's their God, what they're following after, which means what are they doing? They're living after the flesh continually. Food idolatry. That's an idol in their life. They're in trouble. Gluttons. Remember what happened in the Old Testament? The guy was the drunkard and the glutton. Our son's the glutton and the drunkard, and he wouldn't repent. They stoned him. He was finished. 
because he wouldn't repent. Whose glory's in their shame, and here's the other guy that ends up in destruction, who minds earthly things. Well, that's just like the guys that are lukewarm, living after the flesh, rich, increased with nothing. I don't really need anything. I got everything fine. I'm just living after my own little way. Is that what we're supposed to be doing? Minding earthly things? How can you be born again from above? You come into a covenant relationship with God and you have the Word of God, the spiritual law that you're to walk after and you're to live unto Him because you're bought with a price and you belong to Him, your purchased possession. And then how can you live minding earthly things? There's a problem. Colossians 3.1, if you then be risen with Christ, you've been born again. Seek those things that are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. People that are minding earthly things are walking in the flesh. They're not walking in the Word, which means they're going to be walking in unrighteousness or lawlessness, and they certainly aren't walking in the Word. Their end is destruction. They're finished. They're in trouble. We also know, that's why, you know, you can't continue in the flesh. Remember, the works of the flesh, you don't inherit the kingdom. If you don't deal with your flesh and crucify that flesh and deny yourself and put the Word of God in first place and walk in line with the Word, you are finished. People who walk in the flesh are not righteous. You can't walk in the flesh continually and be righteous. How can you be righteous? Only when you walk in line with the Word, doing righteousness. That's why this is true. And who's going to be with the Lord? Only the righteous. Remember, the righteous are those that are born again. Also, during the tribulation, if anybody takes the mark, you're finished. I even heard a teaching recently, someone saying, well, God, God will forgive you if you take the mark. No, he won't. That's a lying teaching from the devil. <laughs> Amazing that someone would even think that. Revelation 14, 9, third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. The smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. They're finished. You cannot do that. Also, you've got to make sure you're not defiled. Remember the guy that was defiled in Sardis? They were walking in white and they were worthy. The guy, and he was, they were conquering, overcoming, and in white raiment. But the guys who were not, they were all defiled. And what happened to them? Their names got blotted out of the book of life, remember? Well, these guys are also in trouble. Anybody whose name is blotted out of the book of life. Revelation 20, verse 15, whoever is not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Anybody who's not born again, they're cast in the lake of fire. I don't care how good a person they were. None of us can measure up in our goodness to be anything. If they're not following and walking in line with the word of God and doing what he says, if they're defiled and they're like those other guys that, you know, vomited out of his mouth, whoever it would be, they're not going to be in the book of life. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 21. We read verse 7 where the guy who conquers and overcomes carries off the victory. He's going to inherit all things. We've seen this in the past. And I'll be his God and he shall be my son. That's what God expects of us. But the fearful, this is the timid ones, the unbelieving, which really means the unfaithful. It's apostos from pistos, which means faithful, faithful and a, which means without, unfaithful. Young's translates it unsteadfast, but it really means the unfaithful ones. Remember, who's the ones that come back with Jesus? The called, the chosen, and who? The faithful. Remember the guys, the good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. How about the unprofitable guy that wasn't faithful, didn't do what he was supposed to do? He got cast down into outer darkness. The abominable, the murderers, who obviously didn't repent and confess their sin and turn from it, the whoremongers, the fornicators, those witchcraft people, the idolaters, and all liars. They sh I mean, that's why we got all these things, you know, you confess your sin and repent and turn from it, of course, and get forgiven. 
you have to get all these things out. They're going to have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, one other thing. Matthew 12. Verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. These guys are through too. If you ever, this is the only one that you can't get forgiven of. This is the sin unto death that talks about. What is the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? We see it up here. In... Uh, this is when Jesus cast the demons out of this guy. He was blind and dumb, and he got healed, got set free. And the Pharisees, in verse 24, said it, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. They were saying he was doing this casting out by the devil's power. Huh. They're in trouble. He comes down here and he says, If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Otherwise, this is, by, this is the whole work of the Holy Spirit operating through him as he was acting on the word. That's why it comes down here. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is attributing the works of God by the Holy Spirit having been done by the devil's power instead of the Holy Spirit. That's what the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. Anybody that mocks tongues is tantamount to blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I've heard a case. Someone speaking in tongues and the people start mocking them. <laughs> they might be finished. Speaking in tongues is by the Holy Spirit. You are speaking and releasing what the Holy Spirit would pray through. Someone that speaks against that so obviously, they, they don't believe it's by the Holy Spirit. They think it's you're just babbling, you know, or whatever. Or maybe the devil's doing something through you or whatever. Well, they're, all, they're in trouble. Do not, any, anything that is speaking against the works being done by the Holy Spirit, that's saying it's by the devil's power, that's what it would be. That is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So important that we understand that all these scriptures, when you look at them all, it's clear. Anybody who's born again could end up in hell if they are walking in any of these wrong ways. They're, they've got to make sure we're walking right. And remember, who are the ones that enter into the new heavens and the new earth? 2 Peter 3, verse 13. Nevertheless, we according to promise look for new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Only the righteous will be there. And what does the fruits of righteousness produce? It produces holiness. And who are going to be seeing the Lord? Just anybody who's born again? No. Follow, which is dioko, means to run after peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You've got to be righteous and you've got to be holy and walking in the ways of the Lord. We look at the summary of these things. Who might end up in hell if you're not walking in the way of life? If you don't receive correction, we need to receive correction. Remember, if the guy doesn't receive correction in Hebrews, he's, he's, he's not a son, it says. He's an illegitimate one, he's not, not a son. Because he hadn't changed his ways, walking in the ways of sin continually if we don't repent of sinning, if we go into unbelief, if we don't have any continuing fruit, if we're not abiding in Him, if we abandon our relationship with Him, if we have evil fruit of thorns and briars, which means we're walking in bad stuff, if we're hypocrites, if we're unrighteous, if we're lawless, if we're the many going the broad way, whichever way I want, if we're not obeying the gospel, if our members are continually sinning and we haven't yielded them to God, if we have hatred of a brother, if we're not walking in love. If we have murder, but we didn't confess the sin and repented from it. If we have anger without a cause. If we're speaking insulting, reproachful words at another and we don't confess and repent. If we're liars, 
if we're unfaithful, if we're abominable, if we're fornicators, if we've ever been, if you're involved in witchcraft, those guys are sunk. Idolaters, covetous, which is greedy people. False prophets, we didn't cover that one scripture, but there's one about the false prophets. They get, end up cast aside as well. If we're a goat and not a sheep, the goats wander their own way, the sheep follows the way of the Lord. If we're walking in the flesh, no loss of flesh. Unprofitable servant, not submitting to God's authority and walking in it and being obedient. No, no wedding garment on, having been cleansed to be clean and righteous because of doing righteousness. Living in the flesh to this life only, not clothed. We're just walking, you know, I, I don't need God. Why would, you be, why would God take you if you act like you don't need him? There's no way. Christian in name only, with no fruit or good works. Works not fulfilled, everything's dying out because you're not walking in his ways. You blaspheme the Holy Spirit, attributing the works of the Holy Spirit to be undone by the devil's power doing evil continually and ungodliness if you don't have a repentant heart. Unrepentant heart. Not obeying the truth. Not continuing His goodness. Not abiding in the Word and the doctrine of Christ. If you have an idol in your life, remember, idolaters are through. They, we read that. The idolaters. That's why God is your belly. That's the glutton. He's got idolatry. And He also walks in the flesh. Minding earthly things. We aren't, we're, we're not following the Lord. Take the mark of the beast, if defiled, not cleansed, if unholy. These people are through. It's going to be a shock for people if they have not come in line with the word of God at the end of their days, being born again, where they're going to end up. Because they think they're going to make it with the Lord? No way. The word of God is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. God's word is the truth. People that want to believe that once saved, always saved. All these scriptures destroy that. They show very clearly that if we're not walking in the way of righteousness and being holy before him, then we're not right with him. And only the righteous enter in. And it's so important to realize, again, as we've emphasized each time, God sees you according to what you are walking after continually, at a point in time in your life. You're following the Lord today? You're fine. Don't ever turn away. Keep following Him and walking in His ways. You get off in hatred, you get off in bitterness, you get off in unforgiveness, and now your sins aren't forgiven. Are you right with Him anymore? No. If you allow that to continually be, remember the guy that's in hatred in his heart? <laughs> He's not right with God. That means you've got to deal with your sins. That shows the fact, well, you mean I'm following the Lord, but yeah, I got bitterness and hatred in my heart, you know. <laughs> well, you're not following the Lord. You may think you are, but you're not. Otherwise, we've got to be the real deal. Those are the ones that are going to be saved and with, have eternal life and be the righteous, the holy ones with the Lord. So, this, is, this series has shown you hell's a terrible place. There's people that will go to hell. It's in being enlarged daily, the Bible says. We want to make sure we're following the Lord. Put the word first place. Follow the word of God. Deal with all areas of sin. Stay away from the things of this world. We talked about that the other day, the Wednesday, about friendship of the world. Makes you an enemy against God. Is the enemy of, with God, against God going to be with him? No way. So make sure you put the word first place and you walk uprightly with the fear of God all the day long and you'll be right with him. And we have absolute confidence we're saved, we know we're saved, we stay saved, and we'll always walk as the saved. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word that brings the truth, showing that there are those who could go to hell, who are born again, if they are not walking according to the word of God. I thank you. I am putting the word of God first place in my life. I will be a doer of the word of righteousness. I will confess and turn from all sin. I will have true repentance shown by works and fruit. I will have no idols before me. I will not live according to the flesh. I will not allow myself to be involved with the world. I am not conformed to this world. I am separate from the ways of the world. I thank you that I am a sheep, not a goat, 
And I will not have the works of flesh in my life, or I won't inherit the kingdom. I will be a doer of the word of God with a clean heart, and I thank you that I am saved, I have eternal life, I'm going to heaven, and I will be in the marriage supper of the Lamb, because I will be considered righteous and holy, and the righteous and holy ones enter into eternal life. Thank you. I am a hearer and a doer of your word all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Father, I thank you for everybody hearing this understands that this is the truth. And they don't follow the traditions of men or what they've heard others say. But they look at what the word says because the word is the truth. Thank you for everybody coming in line with walking in the way of the word so everybody hearing this Make sure that they're going to heaven and they do not go to hell. Thank you for much fruit comes because we are hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen.